Feels good to hear that. That feels so good. Feels good to hear that. <laughs> How's it going, guys? And welcome to uh, what is going to be a wild conversation on knife design. So recently, Ben, uh, tell, dude, tell us about this knife real quick. Okay, so this knife is called the Lander. You guys did a video on it, you and Jamie. Here on the channel, check it out. It's, it's an amazing. awesome video. I think it's fun. So in the comments on your video, there were a lot of people that were like, hey, the Lander looks like... And I was like, does it? So I actually, I went out and bought some knives. You bought it, you bought it. this many, I He bought a couple, some. he bought a couple. Some. Yeah, I had yeah, some yeah. already. <laughs> but I went out and bought some knives because I'm like, does it look like that knife? Yeah. And that was a conversation. I was like, Zach, do you want to have a conversation about this? And you were like, yes. Yes, yes. And here we are, like old times. Yeah, it's perfect. And uh, we've already, a lot of laughs already. <laughs> it's been good. So many laughs. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing, because the first time you showed me this knife, and I think this is where we kick it off, yeah. right? Um, so the first time you showed me this knife, I was like, dude, it looks like the K-Bar Dozier. Yeah. And like, we got some comments like that yeah, in the, in the comment section, tons of K-Bar Doziers. Then just today, I saw it next to the Dozier and I was like, it looks nothing like yeah. the K-Bar Dozier. Right. So, okay, so open knives. So here you go. We're Thank professionals, you. trained professionals. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, let, let, let's start here and because, because. There's this idea that you, you've been talking about, convergent design. Yeah. Right? And so what is what is convergent okay, design? Okay, so, so here's the deal. There's convergent design where design comes together. So like you look at a dozier, you look at a lander, and yes, there are design cues. And I think yeah. the more you simplify a, anything, any design, they start to look like something else. So like take a pencil, for instance. Yeah. If you look at all the pencils, not all the pencils, but many of the pencils in the world all look like the same thing. And I think it's because the function of the tool has become so close to the design of the tool. Yeah. And I think that's when, so like people are saying, hey, the lander looks like the Elementum. Now see, this one I didn't agree with at all because I'd held the lander and the Elementum at the same time and I was like, they don't look anything alike. Personally, I don't think so. And see, I think they kind of do, but yeah. I didn't sit there and say, I'm gonna copy an Elementum. Right. Like totally different knives. And when you look at the lines, especially look at the, the butt of the knife. Yeah. Totally different lines. Yeah. Uh, even in the in the blade, sharp and pointy, kind of rounded drop point. Mm -hmm. And so that that's the thing is like design converges, but it also diverges. So you have convergent design, you have divergent design, and then you have uh, cultural contact. We have notes because these are big words for they us. They are. We, we like <laughs> we like combine like evolution <laughs> philosophy yeah. and then like anthropology. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, Zach, what about this? And he's like, that sounds like a college class. Yes. And I'm always down to sit and talk philosophy. Yes. <laughs> now, now this is an interesting thing. So the, the Elementum and the Dozier were the two that people had talked about the most with the Lander, right? Yeah. And like, we, you see this a lot in the knife world, like, oh, this knife looks like this knife, or this knife looks like this knife. But we have the two knives on the table that actually inspired you yeah. the most. So here, I'll get the Lander, you get the two. Yeah, totally. And, and let's, talk, let's talk through these. Because so, I think this is actually interesting Again, my mind went to Dozier. When I saw them together, I was like, oh, this actually doesn't look much of anything like a Dozier. But these were actually the inspiration for the Lander. Yeah, right? so Benchmade Sequel, Discontinued Knife, one of my very favorites. I was gonna say, that's gotta be what, almost, like, almost all-time favorite, close to all-time favorite? I love it. It's good, it's, it's, it's a good so knife. Good. It's, it's a good so knife. Good. It yeah. has some flaws, but I do love it. Yeah. And the CRKT Drifter. Now, I looked at these and I said, okay, how can you take the form factor, the idea of these. Like the Drifter is a super inexpensive knife, but it's great, but it has this recurve on it and it has this tip down carry only pocket clip on it. Right. And I'm like, well, what if you just changed a few things? Yeah. And then the sequel's great, but like this was like a $120 knife seven or eight years ago. Right. Like this is not a cheap knife. Like I wanted to, I'm a cheap sucker. We know this. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make a knife that like people could enjoy and yeah. be part of and not break the bank. And the sequel just doesn't do that. Yeah. And the Drifter, on the other hand, is probably down further in the price range mm -hmm. and the quality range than I wanted to be. Yeah. And so you take these pieces and parts and you say, okay, I've had cultural contact with these. Yep. I've seen it, I've used it. And then you look at it and you say, okay, how does this design converge? And for me, it converged in the lander. Yeah. There are things that I like about this, there are things that I like about this, but what if we mashed them together? Right, and this is something that I mean, we both had, have had quite a few conversations with other knife designers in the world, right? Yeah. Over the years, this is something you hear a lot of, right? Is like, this knife inspired this knife, or, oh, I was I was really playing with like this brand and, and that kind of inspired me to do this other thing, right? Yeah. So it, this idea of like convergent design as well as like a cultural connection. Yes, right? like that, that, And we see that a lot in the knife world. And I think that when you get into like a really utilitarian knife, 
like you're getting there. Because there were a couple people that even compared this to like a bug out. Yeah. Right? And then like somebody said like a bug out and a banter had a baby. Had a baby. Right, right, right. Yeah. We got a banter, right? Oh yeah. Let's throw those up. And here's the thing is, is especially like I think in the blade shape of the bug out and everything, yeah. like I can definitely see some of that. Yeah. Right? Like absolutely. Definitely. And here's the deal, guys. Like I sat in front of dashboards of data for eight years. Like I know what sells. Yeah, of course. And so Am I gonna design something that sells? Absolutely. Yeah, of like, course. Why design a knife if it, doesn't, if it doesn't sell? Well, and why does a knife sell? In my opinion, a knife sells, sure there can be initial hype on a knife, right? That can sell some knives, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like if it's not a good knife, like the, the bug out, right? Yeah. There was a lot of hype around this knife when Tons. it came out. We actually did a gray man video with the bug out, yeah. right? Which was so much fun. One of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but the reality of it is, is this knife would not be, I mean, at this point, this is an EDC King. It is. It wouldn't be an EDC King if it didn't do the things that the hype said it did. Right. Right. So when you're talking about a knife that sells, it's not just a matter of facts, figures, and numbers. It's a matter of form and function. Totally. Right. Because totally. these are, these are tactile tools. Like we have to use them. It's not like a, a video game or something like that, where it's an ex, like a conceptual experience. Right? Totally. This is a physical experience. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got another physical experience for you. I know that you enjoy Slurpees. <laughs> Brain freeze. Oh yeah. And mm. we have a little bit of convergent design <laughs> when it comes to Slurpees okay. and Icy's. Okay. Oh, now, well, there's a big difference here. What's the difference? Oh, I mean. Okay, bring them in. Bring them in. Bring, bring them in. in. Here we bring go. Them in. Here we, we go. These. We need these. Yeah. Okay, so you, you have a Slurpee. And, yes. Oh, oh now actually we have, Thanks, we so have uh, a third, there is a third category that's landed on the table. This is a Slurpee. This is the proper way to drink a frozen beverage of some kind. This is kind of an icy, but this is a Maverick. Guys, I do a lot of uh, driving, so I know a lot about gas station foods. <laughs> I, I think they're the same fluffiness. Oh no, okay, let's, so, let's so, see, let's see, let's see. Try this. Okay, 100% classic Slurpee. I'm not sure what flavor that is, but that's classic Slurpee right there. Maybe cherry, I think it's cherry. Mm, entirely different. Try that one one more time. Okay. See, there is a difference, even though- Okay, so- you might, And here's the thing, is an icy is actually chunkier way less carbonation and chunkier. Okay, so we, we don't want to dig too deep into this, but the, the idea here, guys, <laughs> are you having that one? I'm gonna enjoy this one. I mean, I'm having this you one. Get, you know? yeah, okay. <laughs> the, the thing is, the, the reason a Slurpee or an Icy exists is cold refreshment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's function first, right? Like, let's put sugar, carbonation, yeah. ice, boom. Done. And, and I think in a lot of ways, that is what a knife is, it's function. Yeah, well, it's, it's got a cut. It's gotta fit human hands, it's gotta open, it's gotta close. Well, and not just fit human hands, but it's gotta fit human hands comfortably. Yeah. Right? And that's why that's why I would say something like the bug out can be not universal, definitely doesn't work for everybody, right? But something like the bug out can be such a universal knife. Yeah. Because like, where are you gonna get a hot spot on this? You're not. You know what I mean? You're just not. Especially same, when you're- Same with the Dozier. Yeah, same with the Dozier. Like you're you're right? not, there is no hot spot. There. Yeah. But something like maybe the Lander, it's a bit of a smaller knife, right? Sure. So if you have, and you guys can see the size comparison on the other video we did, we got, we actually have a Ham Hands uh, cameo yes. in the video. If you have a bigger hand, right? Like, like a big hand, your your finger might come off the back of the totally. of the lander, right? And so maybe that works, maybe that doesn't work for you, right? right? Yeah. But ultimately, the the knife has to fit your hand, and and I think this is where convergent design really starts to come together. Is you look at it and it's like, well, this looks like that, looks like that, and they should mm -hmm. because human hands, for the most part, small, medium, large they have to be able to fit on the tool. Now, this is where divergent design comes in. Right. And I think this category is super fun because there are people out there that are just thinking totally differently. Yep. Like, forget the hands, forget the, it, it goes into like this style art piece. Yes, yeah, it's, it's an art piece, right? Exactly. Totally. So we grab them? Okay. Yeah, oh yeah. Should we, should we go there? Oh. I also love that they were like over here, like the redheaded steps. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so so when we're talking about not fitting hands well, we have a designer, the the late great designer Aisham, oh, right? Elijah, Elijah Aisham. Yep. And out of all of his designs, I would actually say that this is the most comfortable. This is actually one of my favorite Wee knives of all time. And this is actually my favorite Aisham design of all time. The Pleroma, it's yeah. beautiful. It's a great and, knife. And you look at the, like, let, let's put this next to a lander. Like you think about design, and yes, they both cut. This is a sports car and this is a Honda Accord. All day. Like, yeah. all, day. all day. Or or even in this comparison, like a Vespa. Like it's, yeah. it's a bird <laughs> scooter. No, yeah, <laughs> like, no seriously, it, it is. I'll be the first to say, like, this is so beautiful and like machined and you've got your, you've got your inlaid carbon fiber that comes in your titanium, like there, it's beautiful. Yeah. 
but this is divergent design. Like this does not actually fit my hands super well. I mean, it works, it's yeah. the job done. Well, that's what I'm saying out of all Lysham designs that, that yeah. we made and that I've handled, that is the most ergonomic, you could say, that, yeah. you, would, that you would actually want to use regularly. Totally. Right? Yeah. And, but at the same time, like you look at this next to, like even an Elementum made by the same company, right? Mm -hmm. Like just totally different lines, curves, yeah. everything. Yeah. Which exactly. is fun. Like I, I don't think design has to be vanilla. I'm, I'm a vanilla designer, guys, like straight up. Like I see simple things. I see things that have been done and can be modified. And that's what I go for. Yeah. Well, and that's like, the thing is, is like almost every single knife we have on the table falls in that line, yeah. right? Like how's it going to fit in the hand? How is it to fidget with? Yeah. That's a, it's an important function of this tool is that it's fun to play with. Totally. Like we all do it. We all enjoy yeah. it, right? And so like, but you know, when we're talking about- I don't think we could do a video together without a book. No, it's gotta be here, right? It's gotta be here. Like when we're talking about completely divergent, right? This still doesn't, I don't think this still even hit, quite hits it because it's silly, it's ridiculous, but you can hold on to this. Yeah, but it feels like a brick. Oh, yeah, no, it's horrible. Like, like, and like when you hold it, it like, Angles weird in your hand and everything, and that's why she's so wonderful. <laughs> she's, she's precious. She's precious. She's precious. But no, really, like something like this, um, and then like, I mean, not. I'm definitely not comparing this to uh, what's the custom we were talking about earlier? Uh, Velotin. Velotin. So like Velotin, Velotin. Yeah, Velotin has some like really high end, and you see this a lot in really high end custom knives. I mean, you're paying ten grand for a knife. Chances are you're probably not going to use it a ton. Like probably chances not. are you're probably putting it on the shelf. At which point it is divergent from what function. we have on the table from function. It went from function to art. To art, Yeah, exactly. And that, and and knives do that, right? Like yeah, things, not, not a bad thing. Things do that, it's not a bad thing, but it's it's a reality of it, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Okay, so, so let's talk next about what in anthropology they call cultural contact. So I read this article, you read a, a thing, basically yeah. when cultures touch, the ideas between them start to go between them. Right. They, well, they, Cross pollinate, basically. and and this is this is kind of the whole thing with design in general, right? Like not just design, but when we're talking about invention, innovation, all of that. Like there was, I, <laughs> I went down a rabbit hole. Uh, I read a hundred. I knew you would. I, last night, I read a hundred and forty-three page paper on this idea, and I had loved every second of it. I'll put a link up to it down in the description if you want to check it out. It's really fun. But basically, what these two um, researchers did is that they looked at five hundred years of inventions. And they looked at inventions that happened basically right one on top of the other in cultural isolation, right? And what the paper was positing was that the more that cultures came together, right, the more inventions we were going to see in a quicker rate. And it's not because humans got smarter in 500 years. That's not how things work, right? Like, but what happened is, is we had a larger cultural base to pull from, like cultural connections, right? Yes. And so then it, it gave us a larger pool of knowledge so that, oh, I can take like, um, for example, the, the light bulb. The only reason that Edison got the first actually really good working light bulb was because he used bamboo as the filament. Hmm. There were plenty of other guys popping out light bulbs, trying light bulbs, doing light bulbs. They just all sucked, right? Yeah. But because we had a cultural connection to, I'm assuming probably India, right? At the time. Yeah, I don't know. But, or some Asian country, we pulled bamboo out of there. He had that resource and was able right. to make a, a reliable light bulb. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. And I, I think the interesting thing about this with knives is you look at the axis lock so what, three years ago, four years ago now, the Axis Lock uh, patent expired. Yeah. And so it went into the public domain. And it's interesting because you can't patent the design of a knife unless it's a spider coat and it has a round hole. Yeah. That's which a totally separate is, thing. It's a whole other conversation. You, you, we, we, one day, yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody should do a long video on that because yeah. it's totally fascinating. Yeah. But when this went into the public domain, that cultural contact I mean, everybody and their dog is now making crossbar lock. We've got on the table this Acton on Verba knife with an axis lock coming out of the Czech Republic. It's a great lock. It's it's just really good. But like the reality is you had to have these cultures touching yep. before the idea would spread. Yep. And I think what's happened is you, you get that happening within a whole bunch of different knives. We've, on the table, you've got a bunch of like, like skinny yeah, front flippers. Almost this Quaken style. Yeah. There's you, just a few of them. You've got a, a Civivi Justin Lundquist. You've got a, a Brad Zinker. You've got another Civivi. Um, here's one from Boker, like even a Quaken. This yeah. Burnley's Quaken. You look at just like the styling cues between them and it's like, oh yes, I see it. Like yep. these are cousins, these are brothers, these are family. Yep. And I don't, that's not copying. There's a difference between oh, copying yeah. and inspiration. And then, like a lot of these are Japanese Quaken inspired. Yep. Uh, which is great. 
And, and it's interesting to see the different takes on a theme and how one designer will do it this way or another will do it that way. Is that copying? No, that's cultural contact. Yep. Exactly. Which is well, really fun. And that's the thing is, is like Burnley's really known for his quaking designs, yeah. right? But Lundquist really started pushing, that's where I really started to see front flippers coming around and they were in this kind of quaking ish esque style, right? Yeah. So he took an idea, right? Like yep. cultural content, convergence, all these things, and then he made it his own. Right? Totally. Um, and and I, there's a quote that we kind of talked about Occam's razor before this, and we yeah. won't dive too much into that, but there's a quote that I really love. And I think it was from the author of The Little Prince, um, the book, The Little Prince. But basically he says, cause he was a uh, airplane guy as well. He basically said that an airplane's not finished when you've put as much as you can on an airplane. An airplane's finished when you've taken away as much as you can, right? And I would say like, I mean, 90% of what we have on the table slash 90% of the knife world, 80% of the knife world is very much that, right? It's yeah. very much like how much can we take away and still have a great knife? Right, right. Yeah. And, and what happens is when you start taking away, it converges. Mm -hmm. And yep. and I think that's why when you when you see a lander, you're like, oh, that looks like yeah. whatever knife is in your brain, whether it's an Elementum or a Dozier or somebody compared it to a Rat 2. Um, and when you when you overlay them on top of each other, you're like, oh yeah, the spine curves on those are actually or on the on the spine of the handle. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's the same curve. Yeah. And it's not like I literally bought this like two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, bought the Dozer two weeks ago too. Yeah. Because yeah. I was like, I gotta I gotta see this for myself. <laughs> I gotta handle them. <laughs> well, because I'd seen them before. Obviously, yeah, I'd handle of these knives. Of well, that's the thing is I'd, I'd handled a Dozier, and when I saw your lander the first time I ever saw it, like when it was still in proto version, right? Yeah. When I saw your lander, I was like. Dude, that kind of looks a lot like a dozier. But now seeing them together, I'm like, no, oh, it doesn't really at all. Not like, at all. It's kind of funny how that works, you know? And, and honestly, like, I, I'm inspired by simple design. Like I said, I've never owned a dozier. Mm -hmm. But it's it's fun to see when you compare them, okay, the, and this is where, like, design gets really fun to me. Like, look at the shoulder right here, come, kind of coming up to the blade. Like, this is a square shoulder. This is a rounded shoulder. Look at the, the butt. Just very, very different knives. Yeah. But there's something about the curves, and it might be this internal curve here and this internal external curve there, that looks the same and people are like, oh, and I've I, seen this before. And I think it's also like the simplistic utility of it. Yes. Right? That's the thing. Absolutely. Is, is, is like, and, and I think for me too, is I think we had talked about price point on this. And so price point, I started categorizing knives in my brain, right? And I was like, okay, simple utility, price point, boom. And my my brain was like, oh, it's like this. It's like the K bar yeah. right? And it's like, mm, like I guess, but not really. But it's but it's that simplistic utility. Totally. And I, and again, there were a lot of Civivi comments, right? I mean, the Elementum. I don't know why you have the one with these scales, but do you want to talk about those scales? <laughs> yeah, let's but, talk about okay, these so scales. This, really quick. this is a guy in Chicago. <laughs> cool. Called Chroma Scales. Oh, okay, okay. I, did, I was like, I was like, I've never so, seen these. So ones. get this. He yeah. works for HP. Okay. And, and they make these three D printers for HP. Right. And at night, he goes home and prints knife scales. Yes. It's amazing. That is so cool. Yeah. So like, he makes all he like like makes these ones that look like old barrels and stuff. That's awesome. But um, I love it anyway. Yeah. yeah so I, going I back scales. to that, right? Again, going back to that is 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 this idea of simple utility, right? Exactly. And I think when we're talking price point and everything, like the Civivi Elementum is like a king in that it category. Is. Right? Yeah. Simple utility. It's like, oh yeah, Civivi Elementum. Yeah. And totally. so I think that that that's another interesting thing is is not just the actual design of the knife, right? But as you start to narrow down simplicity and utility, you end up in these same arenas. You do. But I think there's also something about the price of the knife, right? Yeah, like, oh, absolutely. Like, I, like if this was, if this was, you know, $150 knife, which it wouldn't be because Ben's making it. But if this was $150 <laughs> knife, I wonder if the same, if yeah. the same calls would be because you, would be the same. you immediately associate it. Exactly. You're like, it's, what's in that space? Right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because our brains are programmed, and I'm not a psychologist or whatever, but our brains are programmed to look at what we know and what we're seeing, and it immediately makes connections to synthesize the world more quickly. Yeah. Now here's here's the next fun part of this, if we if we may. Can we go into clones? Okay, let's go we into clones. We don't work for anybody anymore. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> can we say whatever we want? We can say whatever we want. Here, and here's the thing, before we jump yeah. into this, I do want to seed an idea because I actually really want, and maybe we do this together, I really want to, I really want to buy some clones and compare them to the real thing. I right? did this. You did this. Well, I mean, well, you, yeah, it depends on what you, what do you define as a clone? I see, and uh, okay, okay, let's start here and then we're gonna define a clone because I there's we we diverge on this idea we do. right here. Okay, cool. We do. Okay, so you guys know this. This is a Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza mm. with an insingo blade on it. 
classic, probably the most classic knife of the last 40 years. Yeah, well, not just that, but like, I think years. one of the most number one grail knives of most people. Obviously, yeah. everybody has different ones, but I mean, yeah, it's a winner. It's a winner. Yeah. Now, there is what I would call a clone out there. And I would not from a call company, Yeah. From a company called Sandron Moon. Yeah. And I don't know the number on this seven something. Right. And, and you said this is a Amazon brand. Uh, well, I mean, you can buy them anywhere, okay, but cool. like 15 bucks on Amazon, super cheap. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, $400 knife versus a $15 knife. Right. Now, I say this is a clone because when you look at it, it is very clear that they copied. Right. Like they took the same test and this guy copied, he looked over the other guy's shoulder. Right, it wasn't they took the same class and got the right answer because they both had the same information. Correct. It was, we took the same class and I'm looking over your shoulder, filling in the same bubbles as you. Exactly. Because right. that's that's the difference between a convergent, a divergent, right? And then what we're calling a clone. I would call right. this a clone. And yeah. the reason I call it that is there are some very distinct things about a Sebenza. So like, there's actually a swooping curve here in the, in the spine of the handle. And this, when I first saw these, I was like, Ben, I mean, I can see some similarities, but like, I don't know. This was where you sold me on the idea, at least that they're copying the test. Right? They're copying the test. Because this does the same thing. Right, right? And, and honestly, like I've drawn a lot of knives at this point, that is an unnatural way to do things. Oh, yeah. it's, it's sort of the sway back pattern that comes up. Yeah. And like my brain doesn't do that. Some people would be like, oh yeah, it's designed, but like, I have a tendency to go straight line or yep. curved line this way. Yep. The fact that there's this subtle curve in. In, yep. And you see it on here. There's also these chamfers. There's these wonky chamfers. If you have a, if you have a Sabenza, spend some time with your chamfers. That sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> that might be one of the best Benisms I think I've ever heard. We need to get a sticker. <laughs> spend some time with your chamfers. <laughs> I think I'm blushing. I love it. Um, <laughs> but like you look at the chamfers, you spend some time with them. <laughs> and you can see like the Sabenza has these really unique chamfers. Mm -hmm. And the San, Ma San Ranmu kind of did like a, they didn't even copy the homework well on this one. No, they didn't. They, they, but you can see that they did copy the homework. Yeah, no, they, they definitely were like looking over the shoulder and they thought the bubble in of C and they bubbled in the B instead. Yeah, right? totally. Like, or like, maybe like halfway in between the yeah, two bubbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, I'm not sure. So they did the thing where you like bubble in one and then erase it and then bubble in the other one and erase it and be like, I don't know which one I meant. Right. <laughs> and so like this, this is cultural con contact. Yeah. But it's a straight up copy. Yeah, it's a straight up copy. And granted, you could argue like, hey, tip down, tip up, whatever. Yeah, that's not enough though. But, but I think the reality is they took the idea and they could have made this exact same knife. Without just... the little, because this is the thing is for me, this, okay, so this could be a clone, but this is like the clone that clones itself that then clones itself in my mind, right? Because a, clo a clone to me is like identical. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, like, and I think that's a, a distinction that you have to make. Yeah. Is if I were to go out and say, this is a Chris Reeves Sabenza. Right. And it's not, that is, that's an official clone. Yeah, it's an official clone. Right. This and is then, a San Ranmu that is saying we are a San Ranmu and right. it is uh, obviously. But very much like, oh, do you like some of the lines on the Sabenza? And yeah. this is the thing is, if you hadn't pointed out the spine piece here, I don't think I would have known it, but that is the type of subtle thing that your eye would catch you know you love this knife, and yep. they're trying to catch you with it, right? And I'm they not are. saying they're doing anything devious here. Like I don't, and, I don't and, know who this company is. No, I don't here's care. here's the fun like, part about it too. It's legal. Yeah. Because there is no protection on a pattern. Right. Like you can't. Like I could literally go out and make this exact knife, as long as I'm not using their trade dress, right. using their logo, using the specific elements. They can't sue me. Right. Don't sue me. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and Tim. We, we, we love them all over there. <laughs> but um, it's, this is a fun knife to have this conversation with though. It yeah. really is. Yeah, yeah. Cause you're talking about the most sacred knife in the realm. Right, yeah, yeah. Versus the $15 Amazon knife. Yeah. And and there is no legal ramification. Right. Um, now if they if they were to put a Chris Reeve Knives logo of on course. there. Of course, yeah, yeah. They were full on like AliExpress it or whatever. Like, Correct. Then and, and that does happen. happen. Oh yeah, I mean, happens you, all the time. You can literally go out and Alibaba your own mm -hmm. $400 knife for Forty nine ninety nine, and trust me, I've seen it multiple times. You get what you pay for with those. Yeah, you do. And like at first, they're really good at first, and then they just fall apart. Right, and it's yeah. interesting because you'll have uh, I see this on Facegram, Facegram, on Facebook yeah. and Instagram. Facegram's my favorite. Facegram's my favorite. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where where the manufacturers will be like, "Hey, I'm so sorry you bought a clone. Here's what's right. a clone." Yeah, 
and it's masquerading as a ZT. It's masquerading as a Benchmade, and they'll send it in for warranty work, and they'll be like, hey, so sorry, like you got duped. It's, a, it's not a real And one. that is illegal. Yeah, exactly. Because you're using trademarks, you're using trade dress, like that's illegal. And also, in my opinion, lame. Right? It is. And it's not lame just because it's copying or whatever. Like that's, that's not even the reason that it's lame. The reason that it's lame is that like, especially with this. So let's call this, let's call this the clone of a clone, right? The clone Cause, light? Cause to, yeah, this is a clone light, right? Is, is it a- Made with aspartame. Is it the Maverick versus the Slurpee? Yeah, this so, is the Slurpee? Yeah, exactly. That's the Maverick. And that's the Maverick, right? <laughs> but the, the, real, the reality of this is, is that like, they didn't have to put the little sway into the back of it. They didn't have to do that. They didn't. And and like, honestly, in my opinion, if they had taken that out and done the chamfers and everything, I'd just be like, oh yeah, this is actually like a solid little frame lock, $15. I mean, I haven't used it. I don't know how solid it really is, but like, oh cool. It's like a little like stainless steel yeah. frame lock, knife, 15 bucks, whatever, right? But then they put in that little element. And to me, it's like, if you're gonna do it, just do it, right? Yeah. Like just either do a straight line or just make a clone, totally. right? Why clone light it? I don't, that's the thing is, I don't, I don't understand the clone light personally. What do you guys think? Like, tell us what you think of these yeah. two, because I'm really interested to see where you guys plan on. And it's it's, it's really fun territory too. And yeah. If you ever want some some entertaining reading, if you're new to the community, go research the uh, ZT0777. Uh, totally fascinating to see how two companies like straight up went at it, ZT yeah. and Microtech. And was that a clone? Was that inspired by? Was that? Cultural just, co connection. What was it, right? Was it what, or was it a case? It of, was straight up battle, man. Yeah, or was it a case of simultaneous invention? I'm not weighing in on any of that. Yeah. Let's not weigh in on any oh, of that. I, just, just go look it up. It's like a, it's an interesting but it, thing. But it, it's fascinating because you do have these cultural contacts. You do have this convergent design, and then you bring humans who are totally like fallible and like mm -hmm. emotional. Yeah, and then it's like whoa. Yeah. And you kind of watch this explosion from afar and you're like, wow, <laughs> fireworks. So on that note though, let's talk just briefly on yeah. simultaneous invention, yeah. right? And this is, I think, another really intriguing thing. So uh, like a really cool one from human history is the blowgun, yeah. right? So the 146 page paper I read talked about this. <laughs> I don't know when you sleep. I was only up till four. It's fine. I got like three hours last night. Um, so, so with the blowgun, the blowgun's really interesting because they were, it was simultaneously created in uh, like Asian jungle areas and then in South American jungle areas. Yeah. And not only was it simultaneously created, but like the way that they made it, the way that it evolved from something that was more of a found object to something that was a carved object, down to the way they hold it. And apparently, I'm not an expert in this, but what I read is it's like actually not a natural, like when you hold a blowgun, like I've held a couple, I always wanna hold it like this, right? And then like, then you blow, right? But no, it's like you hold it two hands really close to your mouth and they also like circle apparently. And so you time your strike. That's like how a proper blowgun, at least these native cultures did it. Yeah. Both cultures did it exactly the same simultaneously, more or less simultaneously on, on, on the correct timeline. So I have a knife story about this. Yeah, you, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I was working at CRKT and they had this knife that they were working on that they called the Arcane. And they go to trademark it, trademark the name, and Benchmade had the exact same name. Yeah. And it actually happened twice. I don't remember the name of the other knife, but it happened twice where like, like arcane, like what, is that a mill? Like, what is that? Right. I don't know what yeah. that is, but they, yeah. they landed on the exact same name at the same time. And in this case, CRKT said, hey, Benchmade UK is gonna have it. Uh, instead of going to a legal battle, right, which I think is a gentlemanly thing to do. Well, and that's that feels proper. I think that a lot of times in the knife world, I've seen that, right? Yeah, where like even brands that would maybe not talk about each other, or whatever, there's still like a, a general respect. Oh, absolutely, right? which I love. I love that about the knife. And world. so in that, in this case, CRKT said the arcane name is yours. Yeah, have it. And uh, it happened again. I can't, I can't remember what name it was, but uh, anyway, CRKT ended up with a name that Benchmade had also landed on twice. But I, I don't think it was like sharing class notes. Right. It's just like when you're looking at knife names, you end up on like military terms, outdoor terms, right. sidewinder. Space like Space terms. Space terms. <laughs> space terms. Which is funny because I think there's like, there's a knife out there, I want to say from somebody else, Lander XR or something, XR right. Lander or something. I don't know. But like the reality is you're going to land on some of the same stuff. Yeah. And even if you're not trying to, you're gonna find something, like I wanted to name a knife Rover. Okay, yeah. It's like, there's like 12 knives named Rover. I'm like, really? Oh man, <laughs> like, what a good name, what a good follow-up act. You if know? you own a Rover, let me know down in the comments because I've never heard that knife name before. <laughs> 
It's it's like uh, I, I want to say it's just kind of cheapo multi tools. Oh, okay. they're not cheap. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me know. Yeah. But uh, I, I love this idea of like humans are constantly thinking of these things, and a lot of times the humans land on the same idea, same time, and it's it's not copying. It's just our brains and our hands and our yeah. our tasks that have to be done are very similar. Well, and we're swimming in the same pools. We are. Right? Like, um, one of my favorite ones uh, about almost the exact same thing, but with like direct inventions, not just naming, was the telephone. So Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. We all learned this, right? But the reality is, is there was another guy who unfortunately his name is lost to history. <laughs> there was another guy <laughs> who literally 24 hours later, completely independent of Bell, like no connection with him at all, walked into patent the same thing 24 hours later, all right, it was done. It was over. Like Bell owned it, and and but here's the thing, and this is this is this is where I think that like the real conversation about design opens up, and that is, but it didn't stop that guy from still being very very successful. Yeah. Right. Like the arcane, the not the arcane at the same time. It didn't matter. Like those were both established companies that were already doing their own thing. It wasn't a big deal at the end of the day, right? And that's exactly what happened. With the telephone is, Alexander Graham Bell got the telephone, and this dude went on to basically create the first fax machines. Essentially, that's what they they were called. Like I don't know, like. Auto fax, faxy, McFaxing, you palooka. I don't know how they talked back then, but <laughs> you get the idea. Dude, do you, Malarkey. <laughs> can you say that in a trumpet? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing is, and, and the cool thing about it is, is that that dude's uh, fa essential fax machine, it got used in a ton of factories where it was too loud for the to hear a telephone ring. And they used that machine until 1961 in a train station in Chicago. It's crazy. Right, it's nuts. And the dude still very successful, died very wealthy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So like, that's the other cool thing about it is that I think that if you're working in the right space and you're swimming in the right pools as a knife designer or just as a human, right? And you land in the same area as somebody else, chances are it's by, it's chance. And not only is it by chance, but it, like really at the end of the day, it shouldn't affect either party all that much. Right. Because like, okay, cool, fine. Like I was doing my own thing anyways. Like I'll just keep doing my own thing, right? I think that's such an interesting idea. And right? I, as, a, as a designer and maker of things, I get a kick out of it. Like, absolutely, am I inspired by things? Yes. Of course. I, I'm not going to be the one to be like, yeah, I've never seen a pocket knife before. This is brand new. It's not. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mark Twain, one of my favorite quotes, he's like, there's no such thing as a new idea. It's just a kaleidoscope, and these pieces and parts get turned. And at the end of it, it's something new, but it's all the same pieces. Yep. And I, I love that because I, I can sit here and pull the things that I like from the knives that I've encountered, that cultural contact. And I can make something new. Yeah. And is it fresh? Yeah. No, I mean, it's not like Winter Blades. Winter Blades with the magnets. That's brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. That that to me is like divergent mm -hmm. um, design, which is great. My stuff is like, okay, you you almost got it, but what if we changed that? What if yeah. we modified this? And that to me is a super fun place to create. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, beauty. I think that's everything on the table. I think we hit it all. And we have Slurpees that are like slowly melting. I know, yours and is I getting feel, I know, yours, see? Yours is a, yours is a, and a this fake is, Slurpee. And this is why, because it's a fake Slurpee. Yours is gonna stay better way longer. Is it a Furpee? One. It's a Furpee. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get that on a sticker too? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Spend time with your contours? Chamfers. Chamfers. <laughs> Not your contours, that sounds terrible. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do two shirts. Went from, just went from bad to worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. I think, uh, dude, this has been you a great, guys, this has been just, great talk. Just go home, spend some time with your yeah. champers. And your contours. And your contours. <laughs> <laughs> All work out. Wow. Is this how you ended on your show? Dude, I don't know. I guess this is what we're doing here. <laughs> dude, here's the thing is this oh, is- Oh, can I, can I add one thing? Yeah, go for it. Here's the deal, guys. Zach is terrible at telling you to do this, but you need to subscribe to his channel. <laughs> like legitimately, we, we probably should have thrown this in the middle, but Zach is doing amazing things. It's fun to sit here with him and hear his ideas and what he's doing. If you're not subscribed and, and have that little notification bell, do it. I even subscribed. That's a big deal. Thank yeah. you. I usually don't subscribe because I just kind of like the algorithm to tell me what I like. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Google, what shall I watch today? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, so definitely subscribe to his channel. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> Try not to be too pushy, you know? Let people do their thing. <laughs> I'll be pushy. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're doing great work. Thank you. You showed up in my basement. Dude, it's a great basement, though. Thank you. I heard your horn call, and I came. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap this thing. <laughs> okay.
great conversation on Thanks for on knife me. design. Yeah, no, thank it. you for being here. This was so rad. Like, it was really fun to sit down and talk these talk through these ideas, and it was really fun to just sit down and do this again. I love it, man. Yeah, like we might have to do this every once in a while. Every now and then. Every now and then, just, guys. Just let us know. Let us know if you want us to do this every now and again. Give us some topics. Yeah, Maybe well, like around Christmas, we'll do it again or something. Yeah, that would be entertaining. Christmas special. Yes. <laughs> wear Christmas hats and Christmas sweaters. I love mm. it. <laughs> I love All right, cool. Well, let us know down below what you guys think about these ideas that we've shared on the table. You guys might have some insight. Some of you out there might be engineers. Like, I don't know. Like, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I'll be down in the comments for sure. You want to be down in the comments? I'll be down in the comments. Ben's going to jump in the comments. So it's going to be a party down in the comments. So get down in the comments and have some fun. And uh... after you've subscribed and spent time with your champers. Okay? <laughs> Always spend time with your champers. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. See you guys.